Hello and welcome to Paleo Logos. I'm Peter and thanks for joining me today as we talk about a new and exciting discovery from South Africa. Before we get into those fossils, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for helping me out. Perhaps you've heard of the species Australopithecus sediba. It was discovered in 2008 by Lee Berger and a team working at a site called Malapa. This is the skull of Carabo, an adolescent male from the site of Malapa. In addition to this individual, several others were found, but the most complete one was MH1, an adult female. We found much of the vertebral column of that adult female, but up until recently, some pieces of the lumbar spine were missing, and that's what makes this discovery so exciting. Before we get into the paper describing the new fossils, let's take a look at the skeleton of a modern human. This is a modern human skeleton, and we're looking today specifically at these parts right here. These are individual vertebrae. Your backbone is this column running all the way from your skull, way up here, all the way down to your hips, and then down a little further with your tailbone here. Now, right in this region here, we have these particular vertebrae that are called lumbar vertebrae. Up at the top, you have cervical vertebrae, then this section is thoracic, and then you have your lumbar vertebrae, and then your sacrum, and then your coccyx and a few other things which make your tailbone. Now, when they originally discovered and described the bones of Australopithecus sediba, they had quite a bit of this, but now they finally found some of the missing lumbar vertebrae. If you have a sharp eye, maybe you notice something interesting about the vertebral column. And we take a look at it from the side, you see that it has a bit of a curve to it. Down here, it bows like this, and then up here, it comes in like this. Your vertebral column has a number of different curves to it, convex and then concave, and that helps cushion your steps. Every time you walk, you have a bit of absorbance because this basically acts as a natural kind of spring. And so the lumbar vertebrae and this lumbar curve, as we call it, is very important to being a bipedal walker. Prior to the discovery of these new vertebrae, we already knew that Australopithecus sediba was a biped. We knew that from a number of things, like the foot of MH2, this is part of the ankle and uh, your heel. We also had uh, pelvic blades, iliac blades from both MH1 and MH2. And from MH2, that uh, adolescent male, we had a nice femur here, which shows the angling telling us that it had kind of a slanted femur, like modern humans, allowing it to walk upright, unlike chimpanzees. I've got here the paper describing the lumbar vertebrae of Australopithecus sediba. The paper is by Williams et al. 2021, and it is named, New Fossils of Australopithecus sediba Reveal a Nearly Complete Lower Back. So, let's dive into this paper and learn what we can about these new vertebrae. Let's begin here where they talk about the discovery. Here we report the discovery of portions of four lumbar vertebrae from two ex situ breccia blocks that were excavated from an early 20th century mining road and dump at Malapa. So to understand what they're saying here, you have to know a little bit about the site. A long time ago, this site used to be a place where miners were looking for lime because in South Africa, that's a big business to go and mine limestone. And so miners had apparently placed some dynamite charges and blown this site up. And when they blew it up, they revealed some fossils in the rock under the ground. The former mining road is represented by a trackway located in the northern section of the site, approximately two meters north of the main pit that yielded the original Australopithecus sediba find, so very, very close to the other fossils. The trackway traverses the site in an east-west direction and was constructed using breccia and soil removed from the main pit by the historic lime miners. So, these blocks were blown out of the pit and 
these miners, pick some of them up, dug some more stuff out of the pit, and paved this kind of road going down uh, off of the hill. So, if we go down here, they have an interesting picture here. So you can see here we've got the main pit, and then we've got this mining road right here, and some material was taken out of the pit and placed to make this road, and one piece of that happened to include some fossils. The newly discovered vertebrae, second and third lumbar, are preserved in articulation with each other. So that's really interesting. These two vertebrae were actually fused right together like they were in life, one on top of the other. And refit at multiple contacts with the previously known pentultimate fourth lumbar vertebrae. So that's interesting. This vertebrae, these new vertebrae that they found, even though they were out of the pit on this trackway, actually fit perfectly with the already discovered vertebrae from the skeleton, allowing us to know that they all came from the same individual. Together, the new and previously known vertebral elements form a continuous series from the antepentultimate thoracic vertebrae through the fifth sacral element, with only the first lumbar vertebrae missing major components of morphology, although they did find some parts of that particular vertebrae. So here we have some cool pictures of the vertebrae. You can see here we've got them, these two in articulation, and this one uh, kind of sliding off at the end there. That's very cool. Here you can see they kind of attached them all together. This is the sacrum right here, which was found before. This element right here was found before, but then they found a piece of the back of that particular vertebrae, and then they added these two were also found. In all, there were five new fossils, and they are described below and shown in figure four. Measurements are included in table one. So we have here these new fossils, and you can see so this is uh, one vertebrae, this is the next vertebrae, and this is a back of a vertebrae. Now, they give us all the measurements there, and then we see here. We determine the seriation of the vertebrae described here based on the direct articulation with one another and refits with previously known vertebrae. So what they're saying there is we can be reasonably sure that they belong to this MH1 skeleton because they all fit together very nicely. They're the same size. They just fit perfectly into articulation with one another. So they undoubtedly belong to the skeleton known as MH1. Now, one thing that we looked at about the lumbar spine is the lumbar lordosis, right? That curve. So how exactly do we know that these particular vertebrae were curved like that? Well, they did some interesting studies of them like this one here. So we see here combined lumbar wedging. And this is very interesting. We see here the human female, the human male, the chimpanzee is this purple one, the gorilla is the green one, and then orange is this orangutan. So what we see is that all of these fossils here overlap with humans, but some of them do not actually really overlap well with the extent apes. You can see here MH2, this is the fossil that they're talking about here, just narrowly misses the very bottom of the range of uh, gorillas and chimpanzees, and in fact falls within the range of modern Homo sapiens, males and females. Up here we have two other ones. This is STS-14, this is an Australopithecus africanus, and then STW-431 is as well, and they fall within the range of gorillas and chimpanzees. But what's interesting here is that Australopithecus sediba misses the range of chimpanzees and gorillas, and in terms of combined lumbar wedging, is within the range of modern humans. So that's very interesting. They have a lumbar curve which is well within the range of modern humans. Now, they've got some more interesting papers down here. Ooh, what's this? Pyramidal configuration of articular facet spacing in hominids. Lumbar interarticular facet width index. Hmm, that's interesting. You can see once again here that MH2, this uh, represented by this little line right here, 
falls within the range of modern humans and not within the range of the extinct apes down here. This is a really cool paper, uh, figure here. Um, this, you can see here, Principal Components Analysis on Middle Lumbar Vertebrae, Three-Dimensional Landmark Data. Let's click on this and make it a little bigger. So, based on this part here, um, what we see in this analysis is that the vertebrae falls within the range of humans here and not within the range of chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans. And basically, in well, that analysis, it falls kind of in between. And this one, it falls way out there. So that's interesting. In two of these analyses, uh, it falls within the range of humans. And then in two of them, it kind of falls out in its own area. It's very cool. So getting to the discussion. The recovery of the two new lumbar vertebrae and portions of other lumbar vertebrae of the adult female Australopithecus sediba MH2 together with previously known vertebrae form a nearly complete lumbar column and allows us to test hypotheses based on a more limited material. As we outlined below, Australopithecus sediba demonstrates evidence for lumbar lordosis in the combined pattern of bony wedging of lumbar vertebral bodies, as well as progressive widening of neural arch structures moving caudally, pyramidal configuration of lumbar vertebrae in the sacrum, which does not allow us to reject the hypothesis that Australopithecus sediba has human-like adaptations to bipedalism. However, the hypothesis that Australopithecus sediba's middle lumbar vertebrae is human-like is not fully supported. It's somewhat human-like in shape, but it has some features which kind of make it intermediate. So that's very interesting. It has these feature which gives it the full lumbar lordosis, but then on the other hand, it still has some things which align it with the great apes. They point out that they predicted a very strong lumbar lordosis based on the fossils that have been previously discovered. So, what does that all tell us about Australopithecus sediba? Well, it informs us that Australopithecus sediba was indeed a biped. No quadruped has ever had a lumbar spine that has that lordosis or curve to it, and thus, this discovery is yet another confirmation of the fact that this species was bipedal. In addition, it gives us some information about exactly how they walked, allowing us to better reconstruct these creatures. Thanks for joining me as we took a kind of deep look into this paper. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.